Yellowstone supervolcano, why USGS scientists believe overdue eruption will be a big deal. Well, this comes after the uh, latest that we've had concerning the magnitude 5 Richter that was uh, that hit west of the uh, Caldera Lake, the Yellowstone Lake, that was downgraded to a 4.4. I just had a comment by one of my viewers that said that he knows one of the geologists that did not agree with the downgrading and that uh, quit his job because he believes that they're trying to hide something. Uh, now we know that Berkeley, Sizemo Berkeley has not downgraded it, they have it at a 4.9. But nevertheless, even after that, even downgrading it to a 4.4, 4.5 still makes it a big earthquake. And they haven't had such a big earthquake there for about 35 years since that last happened at a 4.5 magnitude. And um, the swarm is, uh, they had a swarm of earthquakes at the same exact location. 10 in an hour. And uh, if you'll see one of my updates just before this one concerning Yellowstone, they had another big one about nine hours later, 3.5, right in the same exact area. And the swarms are, are ongoing right there. So Yellowstone volcano overdue, an eruption that occurs every 10,000 years. This is today's article, by the way. 10,000 years, that will be a big deal for the park and its surrounding areas if it was to occur. It was claimed by a USGS scientist during a lecture. Now, we know we've had three big ones, three huge eruptions in two million years. The latest, uh, the last big eruption was 630,000 years ago, but they had a smaller one 70,000 years ago. And uh, the USGS, one of the USGS uh, Scientists Lowenstein, no Lowenstein, sorry, Lowen Jacob Lowenstein is the man that uh, says that it has erupted 80 times since then. Most of them being lava eruptions, and just about every 6,000 years it erupts. Now we've seen a lot of activity there. They say that um, they don't expect a huge eruption. Yellowstone volcano, as we know, the supervolcano sits between the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, and inside the Yellowstone National Park, and the caldera is labeled a supervolcano due to its potential to create devastation on a global scale. It's had a super eruption some 630,000 years ago, but there has been a great deal of smaller activity since then. Jacob Lowenstein, the leading scientist in charge of monitoring Yellowstone, claimed the caldera has erupted 80 times since then. So the 70, 50 times were increased to 70 times, now it's increased again today at 80 times. The number seems to keep uh, increasing. So he says that the caldera erupted 80 times since then, with the last activity around 70,000 years ago. This is what he said in 2014, quote, since the last caldera forming eruption 630,000 years ago, there have been lava flows, and in some cases very big lava flows beneath the topography, end quote. Addressing a model of the landscape, he said this is one of the largest ones. It's called the Pitchstone Plateau, and it's about the size of Washington, D.C. So this is actually the last volcanic eruption at Yellowstone, he says. A plateau is an area of high land, usually consisting of relatively flat terrain that's raised significantly above the surrounding area, often left behind from an eruption. Lowenstein went on to reveal how if history repeats itself, it would be a problem on a local scale. He said since that time, there has been no volcanism at Yellowstone. So all of these lava flows are what has been going on for the last 30 to 40 big eruptions at Yellowstone. And if something like this happens today, it would be a big deal. It would not have a lot of explosive activity, and it would not be a national scale emergency. It would be very much a local event, but it would still be very spectacular. 
Lowenstein went on to detail how we are now overdue an eruption of this magnitude by 60,000 years. And I remind you, this is the USGS scientist saying this. And he continues, these events normally occur every 10,000 years and appear in groupings. But the last one was 70,000 years ago. Lowenstein detailed during that same speech how the ground of Yellowstone has risen over the last 50 years. He said, so the really remarkable thing about Yellowstone is that it moves up and down. The ground surface is unstable and over time it moves. Bob Smith was one of the parties that came in and resurveyed a series of roads that had not been surveyed since the 1920s. Dan Jurison also worked on this topic. He's from the Cascades Volcano Observatory. He said Bob and his colleagues reoccupied the benchmarks that were done previously in Yellowstone, and he made a contour map that shows the number of millimeters that the area has risen, has gone up. He went on to reveal how parts of the ground had risen as much as 2.3 feet in the last 50 years. And he added, you can make out 500, 400, and 700 is the largest in the middle. The most of the activity is going in the caldera, and the uplift is about 700 millimeters in between two areas we call the resurgent domes. So it's 700 millimeters, 70 centimeters, which is about two feet. And so that has happened in 50 years, he said. This is remarkable observation and something we have been tracking ever since, and we're trying to understand it. And now one of the recent uh, USGS announcements, they come out every week on the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, has told us they've announced that the Norris Geyser Basin, which has a steamboat geyser, which has been erupting uh, a lot since last March, I think it was 30 eruptions last year, and at least 12 this year up to now, that has been rising, whereas the uh, caldera has been subsiding. The steamboat geyser has been rising. Here we are at Sizemore Berkeley, and we see that they did not really uh, decrease the magnitude of that earthquake, the 5.0. They decreased it to a 4.9. And uh, this is where the initial one was. And we've had the USGS downgraded to a 4.4. You see how big of a difference that is. Uh, going back to this, we see the details of that. Okay, in Montana, and uh, you'll see the earthquake swarm that we had. Still, these uh, the yellow ones are the past week, the blue are this, are this day, and the red the red are in the past hour. So you see that the whole thing here is shaking. It's been shaking, God knows how many months, and uh, this has been the swarm that took place, and is still taking place here. You see, the blue ones are today's. One on top of the other, same exact area. It's filled. Look at that. Uh, there, I would expect that, uh, I have not seen any announcements concerning this yet, but you can see the activity there. Uh, these are the ones that are reported. And uh, the ones that are recorded are in the hundreds, okay? Uh, this here, th th these are the ones that were reported within about an hour after the big one, the 5.0. Um, and you still have more this past day. And usually when we see the rivers, that's that the rivers usually flow at uh, fault lines. They're the uh, ones that are the lowest in the area. Usually whenever you see the river, they flow along fault lines. And let's see where that is. In... Uh, Relation to Yellowstone Lake, the caldera. I think it's, from what I measured about on Google Earth, it's about 77 miles uh, distance to the west. And the thermal area, the new thermal area that was found, 
that they have to uh, observe with a hands-on experience is about right there. The new thermal area with uh, infrared imaging, uh, they have seen dead trees. And uh, they don't know if it's a spring or a geyser area or maybe a mixture of everything. And we expect that uh, once, once everything thaws out, the snow and everything is much better because they can't, uh, there's no road going there. They have to get trek up there. Uh, they have to get a, an observation with their field trips to find out exactly what's there. So that's the new thermal area that they were talking about right there. So we'll keep an eye out uh, concerning the new announcements, and I expect that they will have some kind of announcement having to do with the big earthquake that they downgraded. They just can't leave it like this. That would be very um, suspicious, to say the least. And uh, let's remember that this big quake came out just a day after they announced the new thermal area that was found. And uh, together with the upticks at the uh, Norris Geyser Basin. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.